one of uh, my favorite things to practice on is doing these Celtic crosses. They are almost like riddles for designers or illustrators, how to do them. Now, I'll show you very quickly how I would do it, and then uh, you can always watch the recording back if it was too fast. So what I'm doing here is, again, just using three shapes. So all to get this, you need three shapes and not complicated shapes. You need these very simple shapes, a circle and two rounded rectangles. So let me just do just that. I'm going to start drawing from the center. I have these guides here for to, just to make sure that I draw them correctly. So holding down Alt and Shift together when you're drawing a circle, you can start from the center point and then draw it outside. And the same applies to the other tools like the rounded rectangle tool. You click in the middle. You just probably want to make sure that you deselect that shape that you already have, or maybe just remove the fill color and then you don't accidentally draw over it. So I'm just going to get rid of that so I can draw my other shape. Starting again from the center point, probably even easier if I just lock it. So starting from the center point, why is it not drawing? Hmm, that's strange. Let me try draw on a separate layer. Okay, was just stuck. Okay, so if I start drawing, holding down Alt again, I can draw it. And by the way, with the, with the rounded rectangle, if you use up and down arrows, you can change how much roundness you want to use on them. These are completely rounded, but you can see holding the up and down arrows, I can change the roundness of them. I'm going to use a full uh, roundness here, and I'm going to just place this back. Holding down space, by the way, you can move shapes around while you are drawing them. Okay, so setting that up, I should have kept it in the middle, let me just start again. So start from the middle, holding down the old, I can draw a perfect shape like this. And then I will use the reflect tool, click and drag, holding down alt and shift together, I have a duplicate quickly. It's similar to the um, other technique that I showed you before. So now I have all the three shapes together and I'm going to turn off my guides and look what I'm going to do instead some, some people, I see this, like um, a lot of illustrators are still falling in the same mistake. Whenever you have shapes similar to these, they would draw the circle on the perimeter and then they would draw the one inside. And also for these round, uh, rounded rectangles, they would draw two uh, for each. So they would draw one outside and one in the middle. Instead, what you can do is just use a bigger, thicker stroke, set it up to roughly the width that you need, and this is a stroke, so you can't really work with strokes as well as with field shapes. But if you go to object and choose expand, you can turn your strokes into fill. And then immediately you can work with them completely in a different way. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a fill color on this and maybe the stroke as well slightly differently. So you already see that that switch with the expand was ex especially important step. But now I can just use the Shape Builder tool, coming back to our good old Shape Builder that I use with the circles as well. And I know this because I've done this several times, but all you need to do is to learn how the knot is created and see what I'm doing here. All these different parts I'm joining together. So you can see the way it is up, up there. I'm going to join these lines as well together. Now I made a mistake. So you just simply, you don't hold any shortcuts. You just go over these lines one by one, and then you do these lines as well. So just going over those, and there you go. There's the Celtic cross. And now comes the other tool which I love to work with, and that is the uh, Life Paint Bucket tool. It looks like a bit uh, like a strange tool to work with in the beginning, but it's actually extremely useful because with this, although these objects are not really separated well, I could still click on the parts which I, I wish to change in colors and I could very quickly amend them and immediately it stands out a bit more. Now let's just put another color in here and you're probably thinking about the choice of colors that I use here, it's horrible, horrendous. But what we can do is once you have your colors in place, you select all this, and there's another one of my favorite ones, is the Life Paint, sorry, Recolor Artwork. Once you click on that, you get a list of all the colors being used in that illustration, even the black outline, which by default stays black, but if you want to change the color on that, you have to click on that little dash, turns into an arrow, 
and then you click on here and you say yes. And then even that color can be changed. But instead of changing it here, I go into edit here on the top and then I get a color wheel. I love color wheels. Again, perfect shape, circle. And then I'm going to start changing them around one by one, see how quickly I can set them up. And if I want, I can even rely on harmony, uh, color harmony techniques. I could choose maybe analog colors if I want to create something like that. Or I can choose um, triad, which is quite similar to my horrible colors in the beginning. Or I could use complementary colors. And once you choose a harmony, you can move them around all together at the same time. And that, that's quite nice. But you can also change back to no uh, color harmony at all by unlocking the colors first. And then you can again change them individually. But also if you come up with a color uh, setup, let's just say I will do a bit more closer colors in this time. If you'd like a combination of colors and you would like to keep that but changing them all around the wheel, that's when you lock the colors together. And once they are locked, they can be moved around the wheel uh, together. So let me just do that now. You see how quickly and easily I can change all the colors at the same time. So this is another great thing. If you are not confident with choosing colors, use the recolor artwork option. Okay, so that can teach you a lot about colors. And if you want to save a color setting, that's another favorite of mine. You click on this option here, new color group, save the settings. And then you can come up with another setting, let's say this one. Okay, I can just click on yes. So, okay, if I need to change back to that, I just come back here and I can always use the one that I saved. I unfortunately, uh, um, I amended the one that I wanted to save, but you can see the point that as long as you save each of the settings that you like here, new color group, I can always switch back and forth between them very easily.